morning, dear friends. Happy Sunday and welcome to yet another worship here at the United Church of Dorset and East Rupert. We are deeply appreciative that you have invited us into your homes and into your hearts. And so I greet you as Jesus taught us to do. <clears throat> May the peace and the love of the Lord be with us all. Let us uh, gather around some upcoming news. First of all, <clears throat> we want to thank Robin and Henry Chandler for giving us our lovely flowers in thankful memory of their wonderful church family. God bless you, Robin and Henry. Coming up this week, Tuesday evening, November 24th, we are once again going to have our annual interfaith Thanksgiving service, but of course, it will be different as is everything else. And we will be able to access it on YouTube <clears throat> and Facebook and GNAT TV and Zoom. And uh, we will send out a congregation-wide invitation so that you know how to join in the service. Uh, some holiday week updates. Uh, due to the Thanksgiving holiday, there will be no fireside chat this week. There will be no Bible study and likewise no prayer group. But we will return to all of these wonderful ministries uh, in the first week of December. And may all of us have a blessed and safe Thanksgiving. So I always feel that this Sunday is our entrance into the holiday season. And when most of us think of holidays, we think of having time off and getting together for all sorts of dearly beloved rituals. But this year will be different. And in some ways, we will be forced to remember that holidays can become holy days. And that for all of these special events, there was at one time, and there still is, a holy reason for gathering. And that we, this year more than perhaps any in a long, long while, can focus in on what the holy values, the holy reasons for this holiday season are all about. And may joining us for worship here at the Dorset Church help you to do that, just that. And so let us join our hearts, our minds, and our souls as we worship God this day. Friends, let us join with one another to call ourselves to worship. Oh, come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. For the Lord is a great God, a great ruler over heaven and earth. Let us worship God.
I invite us to join together in our unison prayer of confession. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, judge of the peoples and nations, we confess that we have not seen your face among our neighbors in need. We have not shared our food with the hungry. We have not offered clothes to the destitute or shelter to the homeless. We have not welcomed the stranger, nor have we visited vi prisoners. We have not paid attention to these, your sisters and brothers, and in our neglect we have failed to serve you. Lord, forgive us. Open our eyes to recognize your beloved family. Give us the blessing of sincere repentance that we may know the joy of eternal life with you and all who have gone before us in this world and in the world to come. Amen. I invite us together to have a moment of silent confession. Let us join in our unison assurance of God's forgiveness. Brothers and sisters, God seeks the lost sheep and feeds them with justice. Forgiven and freed, let us turn then and live in Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join together in our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. us all to join together as we have our prayer of pastoral care. Through Jesus Christ, God has shown us the rule of divine love in compassion for the least, the lost, and the lonely. Let us pray, saying, Compassionate Lord, receive our prayer. O oh God, we live in a world of plenty in which many, especially the poor, struggle for daily bread. During this time of pandemic, we pray for those who lack the basic necessities of life, for the poor and the benevolent and the hard of heart. Compassionate Lord, Receive our prayer. God, you admonish us to offer hospitality to the stranger and to welcome the weary. We pray for all refugees and for those who have no place to call home. Convict the conscience 
and open the heart of any who raise walls of self-preservation and isolation. For the stranger, for those who minister to them, and for those who would refuse them, compassionate Lord, receive our prayer. O oh God, you hear the cry of all who are in distress. We pray for all facing COVID-19, for all exhausted while on the front lines in hospital care throughout our country. Help your people who work for the welfare of others, especially for the most vulnerable among us. Compassionate Lord, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. Hear us, O Lord, as we lift up those on the church's prayer list. We pray for baby James, for Ched Evans, and Andrew Leeds, for Doris Ibbotson, Mary Abbott Ludke, and Terry Archard, for Tyler Kennedy, Frank, for Jameson Gray Pelton, for Betsy Lavecchia, for Vern James and Audrey Brass. We pray for Carl Hedman and Mary Deo, for Henry Croft and Evan Barbaris, for Barbara West and Hayward Day. Hear our prayers for Dick and Linda Buswell and Susan Reese, for Mackenzie Cahill and Andrew Altman, for Nate and Allie Webster, for Kenny and the Kunish family, for Linda and Peter Salmon, for Adam, Aaron, Emma, and Jonah, for Richard White, for Rand Snyderman. We pray for Sandy Carey, for Claire, for Jackie and Mike, for Aaron Pixley Thurston and Ed Shirowski, for Diane and Chip Wilson, for Gary Dufour, for Zena Perry and Cheryl Hazelton and Desiree Hazelton, for Crystal Madison, for Vicki Houston and Sally Weikert. We pray for Harry Boynton and Kurt Trumbetic, for Gladys, for Pam DeBona, for Andrew Ross, for John Griffith, and for Dan. In the Dorset Church, we pray for the Community Sharing Project volunteers, so hard at work already. And in the Vermont Conference, we pray for the members and the church of the, at the Brandon Congregational Church. And in the United Church of Christ, looking forward to Giving Tuesday on December 1st, we see the UCC focus on assisting refugees and asylum seekers. For the sick, and those in distress, for those who care for them, and for all who are fearful in these times. Compassionate Lord, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. Almighty God, we honor on this day those who have died and whose memories are with us in ongoing ways. May we dedicate our lives anew to your service in the name of Jesus Christ, by the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. I invite us to hear our invitation and blessing of the offering. God holds the depths of the earth and the heights of the mountains, the sea, and the dry land. Let us offer our gifts to God, our Maker. 
Let us pray. Almighty God, we give you thanks and praise for your love in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Accept our offering in union with Christ's offering for us. Confirm in us the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, that we may testify to the rule and sovereignty of his love. In Jesus' name, amen. A reading from the book of John. A little while and you will see me no more, and again in a little while you will see me. Some of the disciples wondered to one another, what does he mean, a little while and you will not see me, and then a little while and you will see me? So Jesus explained, I'm going to the Father. But they continued, what does he mean a little while? Jesus knew they wanted to ask him aloud, so he said, are you discussing among yourselves what I mean by a little while and you will not no longer see me and again in a little while you will see me? Truly I tell you, you will weep and be sad, but the world will rejoice. You will pain and your pain will turn to joy, like a woman in labor who endures knowing her child will be born. And now a reading from 1 Thess Thessalonians. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. We give heartfelt thanks to Keith Michael for doing such an excellent and faithful job of reading our scripture lessons for the day that undergird my sermon. But before I preach, let us pray. O oh God of love, O oh God of truth, let us say strong things gently and gentle things strongly. Let us speak the truth in love to all, in love the truth that lives in each. Let us hear the truth as we each need it and live that truth. O oh God, we heed it through Jesus, your word and our Lord. Amen. Don't it always seem to go that you don't know what you got till it's gone? We baby boomers hear Joni Mitchell singing her 1970s hit, Big Yellow Taxi, when we hear those words. And her song was part of the mantra of the up and coming environmentalist movement back then, when Americans were beginning to understand the battle between conservation and development. And that battle, Joni Mitchell put into pithy terms, they paved paradise to put up a parking lot. But now, thanks to this pandemic, that line, you don't know what you got till it's gone, has taken on far broader meaning and far deeper truth. We've lost so much carefree ability to work and play, to travel and dine, to worship and to reach out in mission to help others. Basically, everything that calls for gatherings has been hindered. So much so that I decided to write a new verse to that golden oldie Thanksgiving hymn, We Gather Together. We gather together, but only at distance of YouTube and Facebook and certainly Zoom. We do what we must at COVID's insistence till life as we love it can finally resume. Amen and amen. But in the meantime, we persevere. 
we dig into the spiritual disciplines of Christianity that set us apart. The Bible calls these the nine fruits of the Holy Spirit. Love, joy, peace and patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Every single one can help us get through these challenging times. Every single one was a trait in Jesus himself that his followers dearly admired and tried to emulate. Every single one has little to do with gathering and everything to do with telling yourself, this is how I will practice my faith. This is how Jesus Christ will be present in me. But John's gospel reminds us that this takes time. A little while and you will see me no more, but again in a little while you will see me. Now some of the disciples wondered, what does he mean, a little while? Jesus said, truly I tell you, you will weep and be sad, you will have pain, but your pain will turn to joy like a woman who endures her labor, for she anticipates her child to be born. That little while is a big deal, like pregnancy. It is that essential journey called grief. It is that little while that we all must go through when dealing with loss. I think that one way to explain our national anger and depression is to realize that we are all grieving right now. Anger and depression are two very natural, very normal reactions to missing people and missing events and activities that we dearly love. Perhaps you see these reactions in yourself <clears throat> or someone you love. And certainly grieving the death of a loved one, such as all those who loved the 250,000 Americans who died from COVID-19 feel like it's more an eternity than a little while. Indeed, I doubt one ever gets over the loss like death. But John's gospel doesn't say you will get over it. What it says is you will learn to see in a new way. I think of it this way, that when you have lost in sight, you have gained insight. And I believe that this insight includes thanksgiving. Not thanksgiving as an American holiday about pilgrims. Not thanksgiving as a bountiful meal followed by a football game. No, the thanksgiving I celebrate is celebrated in Thessalonians. In all circumstances, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Jesus Christ meant for you. Friends, thanksgiving is a way of seeing the world. It is not contingent on good luck. It is not dependent on having things go your way. It is a way of seeing that hopes and endures all things. This kind of thanksgiving isn't Pollyanna-ish or naive. It is a choice for how to see life. And it is a smart choice because despite whom or what you lost, thanksgiving equips you and empowers you for the journey ahead. It opens you to eventually discovering new life down the road. And it is a loving choice, because despite whom or what you lost, while you had them, 
They were your blessing. They enriched your life. They helped make you who you are. And Thanksgiving keeps their spirit alive in your heart, in your memory, in your soul. Now let's admit that this pandemic has given us all time to think. And in the greater scheme of life, it will actually be, as Jesus declared, a little while. And during this little while, I've heard many people talk about this reduction in life actually generating a greater thanksgiving for what they have, for who they are, for what's truly important in their lives. In a manner of speaking, they're witnessing to Joni Mitchell's truth. You don't know what you've got till it's gone. And so I wanted to share a short list of my own personal pandemic thanksgivings. First, because we lost the freedom of large gatherings, I have gained a newfound thanksgiving in internet communication. Yes, it took a little while. A little while to understand zooming and videoing and downloading and then learning how to protect ourselves from hackers. But now I am on my way, at least, to being a new disciple. And I'm sure that we shall continue internet togetherness, even when we go back to traditional ways. Second, because our freedom to travel has been so curtailed, Esther and I have a deeper and soulful appreciation for the blessing of home and marriage. Certainly there are those little whiles when we do not see the bigger picture, when we are caught in tunnel vision. But having a home and living with a trusted friend and helpmate and listener and lover are some of the greatest gifts anyone could have to negotiate life's ups and downs. This pandemic has strengthened our home life such as nothing else has ever done. Third, because so much of life's busyness and business has been restricted, we now live simpler lives. We become more introspective. We've appreciated silence and solitude. Our minds, our times are less cluttered and frenetic. Just the other day, I was talking to a friend who was bragging that her closets have never been cleaner and better organized than now. And I thought to myself, yes, yes. In a spiritual sense, this pandemic has helped me to clean out the closets of my soul, to get rid of superficial attachments, to pare down draining commitments, to organize my time, my energy, my spirit far better than I would have if left on my own. And creativity has blossomed. Poetry has flowed better. I've discovered a new rhythm to writing. And it all has me wondering if an occasional purge is, as Richard Rohr declares, a necessary loss. Certainly my list could go on being a part of this church and congregation, having a job and an income, certainly having health and the health of my family, all of these make me thankful. But my deepest hope is that my thanksgiving isn't based on a list. It is based instead on a new way of seeing life. 
Nevertheless, I want to ask you, what is your pandemic Thanksgiving list? And if you don't have one, you are missing out on the purpose of this little while. You are missing out on that spiritual insight called Thanksgiving that endures all circumstances and is God's will for us in Christ Jesus. Amen. Thanksgiving takes on its deepest form when it comes to the death of our loved ones. Which is why every year here at the Dorset Church, we have an all-church memorial service. And we light a candle for all of the loved ones that we have lost and dearly loved, but whose spirits feel, oh, so near to us as we enter into this holiday season. And so, uh, first of all, I want to thank my wife, Esther, for lighting our in-church candles. And I pray that when you folks at home hear the name of your loved ones being read from our memorial list, that you light a candle for them in your home and in your hearts, just as we do here at the Dorset Church. Jim Ochstadter, Catherine Akers, Albert and Marguerite Angerer, Anne Jean Applegarth, Frank and Georgette Ario, David Gordon Ashton, Alan Grant Ayers, Don Badger, Andrew Baer, Bob Baldwin, Andrew and Betty Barclay, the Barney family, Bill Barrows, Dorley and Tom Bates, Ernie and Ulrich Beckstein, Carlos Belmont, Al Bennett, Virginia and Florio Bertolino, Ann Beto, Barbara and Otto Billo, Stephen Bach, the loved ones of the Brock and Reed family, Edward and Hannah Blaze, Mary Ann Bloom, Norman Bloom, Vivian, Edwin, Earl, Worth, and Carl Bowen. Loved ones of the Bovey family, Jane Bridges, Charlie Buckmeyer, Laverne and Wendell Birch, Flora and Dave Bushy, loved ones of the Burrell family, Richard F. and Adela Buswell, Henry and Myrtle Buzzell, Louis J. Capazzoli Jr., Jerry Carr, Elma Carey, loved ones of the Case family, loved ones of the Casey family, Helen and Vinnie Sapella, loved ones of the Chandler family, Sue Chapman, Eugene Chartrand, Diane Citron, Ruth, Max, and John Clough, Lenny Clover, Judy Cohen Meyerson, Mary Elizabeth Cohn. The loved ones of the Coolidge family, Reginald and Elizabeth Council, David Coverwell, the loved ones of the Cranshaw family, Essie and Bill Cruikshank, Evelyn Cushman, June Dunn Davis, Marilyn Davies, Frank DeCesar, Larry Delker, the loved ones of the DeBona family, Virginia Deering, Jane DeLong, Linda Damaris, Claude Dern, David Dern, Jennifer Elizabeth Dickinson, 
Edwards and Marjorie Dickinson, Stacy Diefenbach, Dorothy and Francis Drunsick, Jill and Fred Donaldson, Earl and Charlotte Dufour. Robert W. Ebling IV, Betty Ann Enders, Jane Evans, Margaret and Chuck Evans, Jim and Barbara Eyre, Alan Falber, Marjorie and Robert Fasty, Marjorie and Everett Fay, Ann Filkins, Bob Fowler, Bonnie and Peter Franklin, Richard Freeman, Claire Freeman, Loved Ones of the Frost family, Loved Ones of the Gasparetti family, Russell Gay, Theo Grapshi, Sue Gray, Loved Ones of the Gilbert family, Eddie Gill, Harold E. Gill, Tim Gleason, John Gorley, Loved Ones of the Gray family, Grace and Herman Grip, Loved Ones of the Golden family, Loved Ones of the Gregory family. Mitt Gustafson, Andrew Guthrie, Arthur Hansen, Leif Herbert Hansen, Carol Witt Harrington, Jay Hathaway, June Hawkins, the loved ones of the Hazelton family, Carl and June Hedman, Tilly Hirschman, Cecilia and Frank Herzig, Catherine Kitty Hittle, Ted Hoffman, Mary Kimball Holland, Peter Hollenbeck, Jean Holman, Henry and Virginia Holmes, Jack and John Douglas Hans, Harry Howland, Mary Beth Hutchinson, Al Ibbotson, Claire Iris, Jane Yeager, Susan Janissaro, Diane and Reg Jennings, <clears throat> Jessup family loved ones, Nelson Jessup, loved ones of the Johnson family, Diane Johnston, Thomas Johnston, Donna Jones, Margaret Peggy Keeler, loved ones of the Keener family, Patricia and Joseph Kelly, Ben Kirstel, Novel Clages, Ingrid Komar, Rudy Kugler, Louis Kwasanuski, Peggy Lake, Beverly Landman, Loved Ones of the Levine family, Louis Larkin, Gardner Larson. The loved ones of the Leach family, Alice Levin, Phil Lima Jr., loved ones of the Limbacher family, loved ones of the Lindsay family, the Lorenzo family, the loved ones of the Longacres, William Lutz, Joan Mazaros, loved ones of the McCarthy family, Doug and Mimi McGarvey, loved ones of the McFall family, Jerry Skip Martin, Patty Maloney, the Reverend William S. Maloney, loved ones of the Matthias family, loved ones of the Matson family, loved ones of the Madison family, 
loved ones of the McCafferty family, Meredith Brooks McDermott, Bill and Lee McLaren, James McClellan. Myrtle McGrath, loved ones of the Milhado family, Ed Michael, Jim Milton, Joan Sharkey Mazeros, Jim Mithoffer, Suleen Mulgano, Chris Esther and Francis Monroe, Amanda Morris, Mimi Morville, Anna Mundigo, Judy Meyerson, Haken Mervang, Nancy Mervang, Loved ones of the Niles family, Alan and Nancy Norris. Loved ones of the Og family. Loved ones of the O'Leary family. Bernard and Mary O'Neill. Kevin O'Neill. Loved ones of the Olson family. Edith Altman. John Oscombe. Sue Palmer, Ronald Parent. Rachel Parmeter, George and Dora Parkinson, the loved ones of the Parks family, Tammy Paxson, Rowena Peck, Lauren Joan Pelletier, Marie Peterson, David Phelps, the loved ones of the Pierpont family, the loved ones of the Peterson family, Marie T. Peterson, loved ones of the Pitcher family, Margaret Dale McGuire Pajunas, Ian Pollock, Kathy Powers, Wendy Putnam, Donald Questner, Jack and Carol Rafter, Jerry Rasso, Rudolph Raspe, Catherine Reed, Claire Reeve, Renee Renshaw, Winnie Riggle, Judy Rigney, Ron Ritchie, Joe Rizzio, Walter and Peggy Rogers, Gladeth and Harold Roth, Anthony Romano. Lillian Sari, Neil Sargent, loved ones of the Savage family, loved ones of the Schaefer family, Joan and Marie Schultz, Joan and Walter Schumacher, Paul Schwint, Irma Schofield, loved ones of the Sherman family, Charles Simpson, Yvonne Slade, William and Dorothy Smack, Abel Smith, Hoxie Smith, Thomas F. Smith, Walt Smith, loved ones of the Smith family, Loved ones of the Squire family. Loved ones of the Statler family. Lou Stern. Bob and Barb Stetson. Alicia Stewart. Charlie Stewart. Loved ones of the Stewart family. Carter Stone. Reverend Paul and Mary Strang, the loved ones of the Sykes family, Ward C. Swift, Charles and Gladys Taylor, John and Bob Taylor, Don Thompson, John Thompson, Harold and Madeline Tobin, Betty Tobin, 
Pearl and Cassie Tobin, the loved ones of the Toby family, Shirley Takarsik, Carl Tremper, Dennis and Hazel Trumbly, Eddie Shorn, Helen Tyler, Nancy Eustick, Larry Velker, James Vincent, Robert Voorhees Jr., Janet and George Wallace, Amy Wallace, and George Ward. The Welsh family, loved ones of the Walsh family, Benjamin Weinblad, Rich Wilkerson, Alex Weiss, Robin Williams, Richard Weinblad, Carol Porter Welsh, Carol Bakabin Welsh, loved ones of the Wesh family, Jennifer White, John White Sr., Joseph Whitehead, Bela Wilfred, Harriet and Cal Williams, loved ones of the Wise family, Murray Wolf, Peg Wiegand, the Wright family, Paul and Luke Zimmerman. May their memories burn brightly and warmly in our hearts forever. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all today and forevermore. Amen. Oh,